Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Supernova Super Fangs Path. So the last place we left off, we were still at the funeral. We were talking to the uh, guy who is pretty much Nick Fury, and so we're gonna pick it up right there. Anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy the maintain for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> This Gregory is starting to remind me of the military recruit that came around our high school. My dad, being a vet himself, was keen on me hearing the man out. Of course, that wasn't going to happen. Not then, not now. Thanks. Gregory must be catching on that I am very much lacking in enthusiasm at the moment. It gives me a long look, his expression turning somber. It's a tragedy what happened to Mo with Michael. Still, we have to keep moving forward. We're all counting on you. I intend to do my best. I am certain you do, and we at Spec are committed to ensuring our great heroes can get the job done. The Sentinels are an independent group, but I think you should consider a formal contract with us, Nick. Our support can be... invaluable. There it is. I think I'll stick with the team, but thanks. A partnership with us won't preclude you from that. Still, I I'll pass. To my great surprise, the Husky shows no signs of frustration with me, and said, smiling again. This is obviously not the best time for this talk. We should meet again so you can learn more. He hands me a business card. As tempted as I am to toss it, I pocket it before nodding to him. Is that all, then? For now. Hope to see you soon, Nick. Just don't go mentioning my name to anyone, alright? And good luck. Sure, thanks. Most everyone is gone by now with just Vince and Frank in the car and the Baron watching me from the sidewalk. He beckons me with a gesture. There. Done. What did he say? He wants me- he wants to get me in some bullshit contract. I take it you refused. I snort in response. Not a flag licker, then. Good. Although you better have stayed respectful. Gregory is not someone we can afford to antagonize. Oof. Must be hard for you with your shining personality. My comment is met with a slight narrowing of the rat's eyes. What's a flag licker, anyway? Superheroes in government employ. Ugh. Yeah. Didn't know that was a thing. Read the news, then. Okay, whatever. He said he wanted to meet up again. Hmm. He'll have to sooner or later. Like it or not, dealing with the government is going to become part of your life. I'd rather it be later, then. The rat nods. Would help if you're not as clueless when it happens. Either way, we've kept the champ waiting long enough. He reached into an inner pocket of his jacket and retrieves a simple USB stick. Some information that would be useful to you. Nothing incriminating, but still, keep it to yourself and don't lose it. The password to the folder is Coonjob. Seriously? Yes, and read the damn Cape Act. You'll be in it. You'll be in for it if I have to clean up my any messes because you didn't know the law. I just wave him off, not bothering to say goodbye as I hurry to Vince's car. The tiger doesn't immediately drive off as I get in. Instead, both he and Frank give me concerned looks. <sighs> oh, sorry guys. Everyone alright? Yeah, all good. I saw you talking with Gregory. Did he make the pitch? I didn't give him much of an opportunity. Heh. <laughs> what did Sarah say? I think about what I should tell them. Uh, Mrs. O'Connor wanted to speak with me alone. And then again, nothing we discussed was all that private. Maybe there would be no harm telling these two. Should I? Keep between me and Mrs. O'Connor. She was very nice to me. Uh, just sort of apologized, I guess. I don't say anything else, and even though I sense that Nisus wants to explain, wants me to explain further, I just look away until I see him nod from the corner of my eye. All right. Shall we head back? Yes, let's. From there, we drive in silence. Frank has taken out his phone and is tapping at the screen. I'm a little curious what someone like him would find interesting on the internet. Nisus doesn't seem like the social media type, unlike Superfang, who has a wildly popular Instafur account. He posts selfies all the time, whenever he's finished dealing with a crime or from the tops of skyscrapers. I spent some time yesterday browsing through his feed. It's quite endearing in a way. The other Sentinels just have fan pages and such, nothing official as far as I'm aware. And maybe they use that stuff in their civilian guises, but I'm not about to start looking for Frank's accountants in Chirper. Chirper. Eh. That could be interesting. Should I ask if he has one? No, that's dumb. <laughs> My thoughts drift back to the conversation with Mrs. O'Connor. The more I ponder it, the more depressing it becomes. 
I wonder what Baron thinks about all this. We should... Would she tell him what she believes happened? Uh, probably. He seems to be very close with Templar's family. Maybe it means he'll ease up on me, since I got the since I got the power so his friend's son would live a normal life. Except I know he won't, because he thinks Danny should have inherited the bracelet. Templar said he was sorry. Hmm, I guess I know what he meant now. He must have felt like he was throwing me under the bus. Or, well, I could have still refused, in which case nothing would change. But I could also do what I ended up doing anyway and relieve his son of the burden. In that light, his actions make sense. Ugh! If I carry on like this, these doubts are going to per pursue me forever. Maybe it doesn't matter. It is what it is, as I told Mrs. O'Connor. I've already made up my mind. There's no point in moping about it. Speaking of moping, maybe I should try to lift the mood in the car somehow. I have no idea how, though, since I don't know either of them well enough. Which could be a starting point. Small talk to the rescue. Frank, do you also have, like, a civilian identity? The fox puts away his phone and looks at me with a half-smile. Yeah, I need a driver's license, you know. That's not what I... Chuckling, Frank raises his paws. I know, I know, I was joshing. Sorry to disappoint, but I'm jobless. Ah, is that... bad? It's not great, I guess. What do you do in your free time, then? Assuming you take any breaks from all the superhero stuff. I've been trying to learn to code. I'm a little annoyed at myself for thinking that it's no surprise the Asian fox would be into that. Not that I'm about to voice that particular thought. Fancy yourself a game dev? A little game dev? Ah, no, I hate those things. Vince laughs. I tried getting him to play a fighting game with me once. Should have seen the disgusted look I got. Michael, on the other hand, he was all over it. Like a little kid. Imagining the three sentinels just chilling and playing a video game is somehow mind-boggling yet heartwarming at the same time. The tiger is back to his cheerful self now that I've grown so accustomed to the. The tiger is back to his cheerful self that I've grown so accustomed to by now. Nisus is smiling too, like he was the first time I saw him. Let me uh, lower this just a little bit. There you go. There you go. All right, out of four time. Next B. There we go. Nisus is smiling too, like it was the first time I saw him. Didn't expect my poor attempt at getting a conversation going to be such a resounding success. Even reminiscing about their fallen teammate doesn't seem to bother them. I'm a little shocked to learn that Templar could be quite a goofball at times. This one time he told me Danny was starting to beat him at basketball, so he spent the whole day practicing until he was confident he'd stay the undefeated dad. I remember that, he was so pleased with himself. <laughs> Too bad you both got in trouble with Unbound for shirking your patrol duties. The tiger winces at that. Huh, I guess the point is, Fang will go along with whatever dopey activity you come up with, so long as you present it right. Thesis winks at me as he says it. You know what? Scratch that. You don't even need to present it. You don't even present it all that well. Hey, I'm not that easy. I'm not that easy to persuade. If you say so, big guy. Vince pouts as the fox and I laugh, then joins in himself. Nah, but seriously, try not to do stuff like that while Emma's around. She likes she likes when we stay focused on what really matters, do the responsibility and such. What's her alter ego? Oh, she's the county pr prosecutor. Whoa! Yep. Wow, how did she find the time to be a superhero too? The job makes sense though. I'm sure it takes just one look from those intense eyes for the criminals to confess everything. It makes my skin crawl and I haven't even done anything wrong. Okay, I've done some things wrong, but those are too minor to get me in trouble with someone like her, right? I doubt she cares to deal with minor acts of vandalism and trespassing. And besides, I've never been caught. Regardless, Unbound sure is scary. I hope I never get on her bad side. Either way, now that the mood is lighter, at least, we chat away while Vince drives us through downtown. Frank has to drop... Frank has to be dropped off a couple blocks from his uh, apartment building, saying he wants to take a short walk. When Vince rolls the car to a stop near Grifton, he pats my shoulder once before I get out. I'll be in touch soon. About our training, I mean. Nice. Looking forward to it, Vince. I wave goodbye as the tiger drives off. Back in our suite, I find myself alone, with Lucas likely at the library studying for his exams. I should do some of that myself, but I don't feel like it right now. And not that I, now that I have a moment to all to myself, I let my curiosity guide my actions. It's high time I gave this armor a proper test. It didn't work last time, but I was still healing up, so maybe that's why. The Baron mentioned it would repair my body first, the armor second. Should have been enough time by now, I hope. But first, I lock my room, hide my laptop so the NSA doesn't get any ideas, and make sure the blinds are closed. Then, I clear as much space in the middle of the room as I can. Admittedly, this is the best place to be, to be doing this, but then again, 
what would be. I could try to sneak onto the roof. Come to think of it, I will need to find a safe spot at the college where I can take off unseen, won't I? I'll worry about that later. Into my mental checklist it goes. First, the armor. I'm feeling a little dorky as I stand there, arm upraised. I nevertheless try to concentrate on the task at hand. The figure depicted in the center of the pattern draws my eyes, so I stare at it, envisioning myself as the warrior clad in Templar's armor. Just need to fight the small voice in my head that says it's silly to imagine myself like that. I can fight just fine, bitch. Yep, just take blows, swing the mace around, drop some supervillains. I can do it. Wouldn't be very wouldn't be wearing this thing otherwise. As if reacting to my thoughts, the bracelet vibrates. For sure this time, and for sure this time, and then it glows red, blinding me for a moment. Then, starting with my right arm, the armor starts forming right out of thin air, translucent shapes solidifying into familiar forms as the gauntlet spreads up my sort of spreads up my hand and wrist. Ooh. Get us that give us that armor, folks. Whoa! I stand still as more and more of my body is covered, spreading from my right side to the left, the armor startlingly light compared to what I'd ex been expecting. As the helmet forms, I close my eyes, but the pressure is light, and when I look again, the field of view through the slits remains much wider than I would have thought. It takes a few seconds to form in full to form in full sec to form in full seconds that I keep my body frozen in place. And when I move, it's once again oddly easy. The only discomfort I feel is from my tail squished up squished up against my back. My clothes aren't gone, but even then my fur is enough of a cushion between my skin and the metal. I flex my fingers, fold my arms, and take several steps around the room. The glow from Templar's dope no, my armor throws a soft red light around the room. After spending several minutes at just testing my movements, it occurs to me to look in the mirror at, at last, and my eyes open wide at the sight. It's still very much Templar's armor, but the shapes have changed somewhat. The helmet in particular looks different and with much sharper angles. Even the plume is missing. Huh. I can't deny it looks hella cool. Just a bit different. I guess the public will have to get used to that. After more time spent examining myself in the mirror, I turn around and step to the center of the room again. Do I feel stronger? I kinda do. To test my theory, I slide my paw under the bed frame and lift. It's not a stark difference, but there's an undeniable increase in the strength there. Awesome! Now then, time to see if I can figure out this whole flying thing. As I concentrate on what I want to do, the light, up on, the light on the greaves and around my heels intensifies, and I start to float up. Holy crap! It's just several feet, it's just several inches off the floor, but I quickly find that it's difficult to hold my balance and start flailing with my arms as I laugh. Awesome, this is fucking awesome! Fuck it, I should go outside and try this shit for real. I'd go find some crime to stop if I wasn't supposed to be keeping a low profile, but it doesn't mean I can't fly around, right? I could. Yo, Nick, wanna come for dinner? Lucas's voice sends me crashing back to reality. And to the floor as well, as my concentration slips and I drop off and I drop with a resounding cling. Dude, you okay in there? Yeah, drop my backpack. Uh, Alright, so dinner? Nah, I'm gonna eat late. Go ahead without me. I lie on the floor for a bit, heart pounding against my chest. I can't restrain a giggle though. Alright, maybe I should be more cautious, but this shit is, to put it bluntly, really freaking cool. I roll to the side and roll the armor to disappear. Ha. <laughs> I roll to the side and will the armor to disappear. It does, much quicker than it formed, and I'm left staring at the bracelet. Yeah, I can definitely work with this. My fur is matted and I've become a little sweaty, but I couldn't care less. I'm practically vibrating with excitement. How do the others actually expect me to sit around, the stu around and study when I have this? Okay, okay, calm down, I can't go out yet. Even if I'm tempted to throw open the window and try this flying thing out, properly this time, the time for that will come soon enough. I pace around the room, grinning from ear to ear while I wait for my heartbeat to subside. I should do something productive. I decide to look up Gregory on my phone. As expected, he's not officially listed as the director of spec, and searching for Baron's civilian identity is much more fruitful, since there aren't many albino rats in Nova named Tim, and the results aren't surprising in the least. Rich boy from a billionaire family. Shocker! I'll look into him more, more later. I'll take a quick look at the Cape Act, too, but slogging through the legalese is a quick reminder of why I never considered a career in law. I try to extract the main points, at least. Anyone with superpowers who intends to use them to fight crime needs to register with the government. Use of powers on foreign soil is banned. Superheroes can be held accountable for property damage or excessive use of force, yada yada. As I feel my eyes glaze over, I close the tab and retrieve the USB drive the rat gave me, curious to find out what information he designed to share. He deigned to share. Oh, God. Fuzzfeed! 
15 supervillains that are nicer than you think. Plugging it into my tablet, I dismissed the notifications, opened the new folder, and entered the password the Baron gave me. Nova Times, the Colton Observatory and Satellite Array go online this year. World News, tensions rising over the Imperial military base on Cole. Cowl? Cool? Whatever. No fluff butt. Stop saying horny. It's offensive and disrespectful to both lines. Jake Andrews, yo, Brian, want to run a one-shot over spring break? All right, let's see. What do we got? Master Alabaster. Yeah, these are the silly names of these heroes, of these villains and heroes. Rows and rows of files scroll across the screen. Most of them are dossiers on what I presume to be various supervillains of the West Coast. Some names I see more, I see are familiar. Minor crooks that got their day in the limelight before being promptly jailed or forced into hiding. And some so famous, I'm surprised to even bother including them here. Even preschoolers know Lady Winter. Or hell, Flicker is practically a historic figure, even if nobody's quite sure if they're, if, if they're, every, if they're even quite sentient anymore, seeing as how they're a being of pure energy now. Just wandering, the just wandering the desolation in New Mexico like some kind of silent guardian. According to Baron's notes, they occasionally make their way west, though. I keep scrolling. For, for now, though, I only open the dossiers that catch my eye. Besides general information, the Baron has included notes on countering powers, a detailed list of criminal activity, and full reports of encounters with the supervillains. Hmm, okay. He doesn't, spar he doesn't spare any snark in his, con in his notes, either. Not that it's unwarranted, and some of these people have picked truly atrocious names. I'm surprised to see some individuals that have no criminal record. The Baron has listed information on the so-called vigilantes, too. I guess they're subject to arrest because they would but they won't abide by the Cape Act. Does he expect me to try and bring them in if I encounter one? Fuck that shit. More dossiers. And there it is. The Black Wolf. My heart skips a beat, and I feel a spike of anxiety drive itself through my stomach. I can fight. I can fight. There's no reason to be this afraid. Vince is there Vince is there to protect me. Just breathe. I'll be just fine. I sit there, rubbing my forehead, repeating the words like a mantra. All my earlier exhilaration is gone, replaced by a mounting dread. Fuck! No, this is stupid. There are people far scarier on the Baron's list. It's just some asshole wolf with a glowing fist. He probably took Templar by surprise. At best, I'll never have to deal with him myself. And if worse comes to worst, I'll pull through. No matter, no, more than that, I'll kick his fucking ass. With this, I can do it. Hell yeah. Looking awesome there, buddy. The armor reforms around me and brings with it the sense of security I so desperately need right now. Yeah, sure, I've seen it broken, but it's whole now and it can protect me. It will protect me. Whatever comes, I'll be ready. I dismiss it again, not feeling any calmer, but at least a little reassured. Still, I need to somehow work this energy off. Exercise will do me some good. After a quick change of clothes, I... Uh, I'm out on the quad, stretching before my run. And I'm off. No music, just the street ambience. The pounding of my pulse in my ears. I can do it. I'm not running away. If that canine bastard appeared in front of me right now, I'd rush straight at him, tackle him to the ground. Beat him senseless. Fuck you, wolf. That's right, I'm not scared. I've no reason to be. I'm Templar now. By the time my legs are on fire and I'm all out of breath, I've, co I've covered several miles in a wide circle around the college. Wiping the sweat off my forehead, I lean against a brick wall and close my eyes. My phone buzzes in my pocket. A message from Superfang. Nope. Oh, free Wednesday night? Think it's time we got this rolling. <laughs> yes. Uh, what do you have in mind? Think a tour of the city wouldn't go amiss. Vince, I've lived in Nova all my life. Oh, hold up, guys. Nope. Oh. Hey guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut this a little bit short. We had like a little bit of a power outage here and uh, my stuff got turned off. So I think I'm going to go ahead and save it right here. I had like uh, I had like a minute left. So anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.